First question is from Justine Priad. If you eat in a calorie deficit all week and then have a cheat meal, will you gain fat cells and is that considered yo-yo dieting? Okay, so yo-yo dieting is more of a extreme restric- restriction and then kind of an extreme bulk. Uh, yo-yo dieting would refer more to, just to kind of dysfunctional eating. Now, cheat meals can fall in that category. And I hate using that term, cheat meal, because it uh, it encourages this kind of on the wagon, off the wagon mentality, which tends to turn into dysfunctional eating. So what I tend to do is I tell to tell I, I tend to tell people you're gonna be on this deficit. And then once a week we're gonna have you in a surplus rather than saying it's a cheat meal. Now, the science on this actually supports the metabolism boosting effects and the muscle preserving effects of doing this. In fact, there was one study where they compared people who were on a continual deficit to people who were on a deficit and with some intermittent periods where they would eat more calories. And they found that jumping the calories up here and there actually resulted in more fat loss and less muscle loss. Bodybuilders have known this for a long time, um, and I have seen this with people that I've worked with. Now, that being said, this is in a controlled environment and a controlled amount of of a surplus, which I think more to the point of this question is – what I think how people are using it now where it's like, oh, I'm in this, I follow my diet, you know, six days a week and I'm in this calorie deficit, say it's a few hundred a day. And then Sundays I can eat whatever I want, yeah. you know? And then, and I, and I think it's, it's turned into this thing where, you know, I'm not counting, I'm off. I followed this deficit all week. So I'll, I'll eat like an asshole, I'll eat whatever I want, mm-hmm. you know? And so, and, and to that, yes, you could. Yes. I mean, we talked about this with uh, Lane Norton when Lane came in we talked about how you could add fat cells. Uh, I don't think a cheat meal would do it. A cheat day uh, definitely could. I mean, uh, I I know a lot of competitors that post-show would consume 20,000 plus calories in a day. You know, you do that. That's insane. Yeah, you do that. And it's not that, it's actually not that insane when you've been deprived for that that long. And if you just add a bunch of garbage. Yeah, and you eat a bunch of garbage like you are, you just, you just, and so doing that absolutely could do that. So it might that, take longer than a day though, really. Do you think it would happen in just one day? I don't know. I think the studies they did were, were I, like, I, think, I mean, they're in such extremes that like, I, I think, yeah, there's a pos- possibility that, that could happen in that situation. Well, but it's, like, it's average person, not so much. Right. It's got to, it's got to be on a spectrum, right? How, how much was the deficit going into it so how depleted because yeah. you gotta think your, your body's gonna take a lot of those calories originally and fill up all your glycogen stores first right and then fill your gas tank up and then whatever over spills ends up getting stored off yeah. as body fat so it's really there, there's a big spectrum there and you know I think the the more you get crazy with that cheat day, the more you're flirting with that end, yeah, uh, end of the agree. spectrum. Yeah, the theory is that the the body tries to figure out ways or adapt to capture all this extra energy because your fat cells they grow right, so that's how you get fatter. But when you're when you're, you're when the deficit is super low and then the surplus is extreme, your body it, it gets the signal that says. We need to become yeah. more Preserve efficient. Preserve all of this. Yeah, we need to get yeah. more efficient at storing all these extra calories. Not just because we got all these extra calories, but rather because we were in such a deficit for so long. So we don't know if we're going to go back in that extreme deficit. Yeah. And so it actually adds fat cells. Not just makes them larger, but adds fat cells. This is why I think uh, competitors, because you hear competitors talk about this, where they over the years lose their sharpness Mm -hmm. or they they oh i can't look as sharp as i used to even though i do the same exact diet or whatever it's probably it might be because they're adding fat cells to the body and i don't think there's a way to take fat cells away once you add them no you can't you can shrink them but you can't get rid of them right so that's and i i agree with you so that was what i saw with my peers when we were competing is that you know when you were in the quote-unquote bulk season everything goes. I mean, you, if, as long as you're training and you know, your thought was, I'm going to put on as much weight as I can. And with that theory, you're going to add fat cells, which is only going to make it more difficult when you lean out for a show again, uh, the next time. And so you would see these competitors where they would, you know, they had this formula down. Oh, I know my body type. I know what I need to be training. Oh, I know what my diet needs to look like. I know what my cardio regimen needs to look like. 
they would apply that formula to the next show and it would end up getting more difficult, more difficult for them to achieve that same look that they had before. And they'd have to go to new extremes to get to that place again. So, and I, I absolutely would attribute it to exactly this point is that, that what happens when they over consume like that, even someone like that's a, at the competitive level, they're adding fat cells. Well, mm. even not at the competitive level, just having like that whole cheat meal uh, type of uh, mentality isn't as, you know, it's not an effective strategy. It's not something like if we're still just uh, really fixated on, you know, cravings and certain things that, um, you know, your entire week is devoted around, like uh, being able to consume and it, it promotes that sort of binge day where like uh, if there's no like, you know, if you're trying to put all these parameters around that, uh, you, you know, that's that's one of those things you're going to be fighting that constantly. It's a terrible idea. Most people have a really bad relationship with food mm -hmm. or they don't or they have no relationship with food. They don't really understand it whatsoever. And it'd be no different than having somebody who is an alcoholic encouraging them. Hey, one day we're going to get yeah. fucked up. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Exactly. But you'll be fine. Don't worry. The next day we'll get right back to things. It's like you're, you're flirting with dangerous places for a lot of people. And I think that, yeah, one cheat day, a cheat meal, whatever you want to call it, it's not going to harm somebody, but it's what the behaviors that it promotes and then the likelihood of what happens afterwards. Because if you're going to fall off the wagon or you're going to stop doing your diet, it normally happens after that. It's like, oh, you yeah. had that day where that happens and then another day lines up. The and floodgates open up and boom. Right.